right, here we go. Good morning. I'm Pete Jerry, and this is the Take for Market Rebellion on this Tuesday morning. And an interesting day yesterday to kick off the week, a full five days this week. Been talking about that a lot because we've had so many four-day weeks in the last month or so. It's been absolutely incredible. That being said, the focus was on Elon Musk. The focus was on Tesla. It was on Twitter. And everybody was talking about that. It seemed like that was the story of the day. No doubt about it. But the markets were hit early on. You look over at the Dow. The Dow was getting hit. The NASDAQ was getting hit. NASDAQ didn't do a whole lot better off of those lows of the early parts of the day. And as a matter of fact, just continued on. But when you look over at the Dow, on the other hand, the Dow was down early, made a nice little move to the upside by mid-afternoon, then started getting hammered once again, finished the day down about 180 points or thereabouts. And then you look over at the NASDAQ, kind of the same sort of a story, except for they didn't really have as much impact in the middle part of the day. It closed down near the lows of the session, down about 260 points, two and a quarter percent yesterday. And it didn't seem like there was as much focus on what was going on with the NASDAQ as one would expect. I know everybody was looking ahead to earnings and everything else, but still kind of interesting. That was a pretty rough and rough day yesterday. And uh, it just kind of felt like people were just kind of glossing over that. I don't think that was something to gloss over. Look at the two-year and the 10-year. The two-year still holding right around three yesterday. The 10-year started to dip just below three. We still talk about volatility. We talk about it. It was in a very tight range, 25 and a half, up towards 27, not even quite 27, a little short of that. Finished the day in the 26s. So right there, smack dab in the middle is where we basically finished up. We had did have crude. Kind of flirting again up there towards 104. So that was something we did also see, and it was pretty quiet once again. But the Bitcoin getting hit a little bit yesterday, down about almost 2% yesterday. It was still holding above 20,000 yesterday. Uh, not so much luck today, but we'll get into that in just a second. A lot of the storylines yesterday that I was following, at least, and I think part of the reason we were seeing that pullback that we were seeing had a lot to do with what was going on once again in China and some of the restrictions that are there in place and so forth. That's certainly something that's been going on and on for years now, of course, but uh, popped up once again. And I think that was something that uh, probably didn't get talked about nearly enough. We did have some good volumes yesterday and OK volumes, I should say, about 32, a little over 32 million contracts yesterday. So sticking with what's been going on in July, July has been very slow, as you've heard me talk about, 35 million is about what we're averaging for July, and that has pulled down the year to date. Been talking about the year to date being a lot closer towards that 42 million per day kind of a contracts in the options, the derivatives world. It has now adjusted down a little bit over 40, a little 40.8 million contracts a day is what we're trading now, which is well off. We're talking about about 2 million off of where we were trading for the first six months of the year or thereabouts. So definitely seeing some adjustments making uh, uh, happening right now. Consumer discretion. Of course, when I bring up Tesla and I bring up what's going on in that whole fight that's been going on there between those companies and so forth, you look at consumer discretion, down about two and three quarters percent yesterday. Technology, down about one and a half percent yesterday. Energy, down about one percent yesterday. Financials, down about one percent yesterday. It is not a pretty picture, and it's pretty broad across many uh, sectors, not even necessarily intertwined with one another. And I look over and I see the CBOE. That was in positive territory. That was nice. My old stopping grounds, Chicago Board Options Exchange. They were in at a, really a, a very nice day yesterday. Merck had a decent day yesterday. Sherwin Williams was trading okay yesterday, along with Kraft Heinz. But you can see the theme going on here. IBM actually barely, but in some positive territory on a fairly negative day. Now, what was really pulling the markets? Well, just take a look at Twitter, down 11%. That's a pretty big number. Dish, down about 7%. Tesla was down. We talk about those casino stocks all the time. Well, we talk about those restrictions in China. Who's going to get hit first? Well, right away. Take a look at Las Vegas Sands, win, getting hammered to the downside. Cruise ships, once again, the concerns that go into that whole thing. We've been talking about a lot of that put activity, even on positive days, the put activity that we have seen in names like Carnival Cruise and Royal Caribbean and those kind of names. Netflix, a little bit weaker yesterday. Some of the Chinese names, of course, getting hammered yesterday for all the right reasons. BDD, Baidu, NetEase, all getting hit. Meta getting hit yesterday. Nike as well, also getting hit. Hey, by the way, 
I got the shark week on. And as, as you know, we're talking about this all the time. It's always kind of interesting. I'll tell you what, those guys um, do an unbelievable job with all the different covers that we get during Shark Week. It's fun. And it's not just the one channel anymore. There were channels everywhere last night. I got on my shirt today. Speaking of which, surfing these choppy markets. Well, they certainly are choppy markets. And what are the sharks going to have to do? They need to eat, right? Well, our guys are going to be there today at the market close. John's going to be joined. It's going to be Wayne. It's going to be Greg. It's going to be Ryan. They're going to all talk about how do you navigate these choppy markets? How do you find momentum within the options world? How are they going to be doing this throughout that whole deal? They're going to be talking about how they do exactly that during markets like we've got right now. It's going to be right at the market close. I encourage you to sign up for that. It should be a lot of fun. And those guys do an excellent job. Absolutely unbelievable job. The compliments that I see on social media all the time for our team in the Rebel Pit has been absolutely outstanding. And I look forward to that. John's going to be joining them for that. Today, free market, we're down pretty significantly, down about 180 points on the Dow. As soon as we got to the market opening, things already started to look a lot better. We were in positive ter territory, up about 50 points, up about 70, up a little over 100 points. And then in that first half hour, and now here we are in the first hour or so, things reversed around a little bit. We started to sail down a little bit faster and faster to the downside. Last I looked, Dow was up maybe 20 points. And the NASDAQ, which was up at one point in time, up well over 100 points, it started pulling back. It was down as much as 50 points. Last I looked, it had recovered, but it was down about 20 points or so. Movement is there in that first hour, of course. But it was really interesting to see just how different it was from what was looking like a start of the day. But it actually did return to some of that start of the day when you look at the Dow, but not nearly as low as it was in the pre market down, as I say, about 180 points. Crude. Down about a hundred. Oh, well, excuse me, not down about a hundred. Under a hundred dollars. That was a little bit shocking today. Down about four percent early, but it is early. Look over at the two year; it's a little bit above three still. Look over at the ten year, two nine three. So it's definitely gotten itself back under three. Something that's usually been considered considered a little bit more of a positive. We'll see if the markets get that in the reflection of that as we get into the day a little deep. First hour of trade. A lot of the time it's been referred to as amateur hour and all the rest of that. I'm not sure if that's necessarily fair, but it's been something that people have talked about for many, many years. And we brought it up as well because it's been the commentary. But interesting to see how those changes are in the first hour. And obviously, we got a lot of day left for trading. should be pretty interesting. Bitcoin, I mentioned that earlier. It was getting hammered yesterday a little bit. It's down 3.5% today and back underneath that 20,000 level once again. So that's something that definitely stood out for me early on. So what were the big flips? What made the markets move the way that they did in this first hour of trade? Well, consumer discretion, early on up about 1.5%, then it went into the red. Technology was up nearly 1%. It was down about three quarters of a percent. Materials, pretty much unchanged. But then you get over to energy. Energy just continued that move to the downside. It was down 1.5%. It got down to 2%. Early on, financials did flip around in a positive way, actually, flat early on and actually up about a half a percent. So definitely some moving and some shifting going on in this first hour of trade. I'll tell you what, when you look and you see the airlines all starting to move to the upside, that's a little bit of a positive. I would have to take away a little bit from that. You got American, you got United, you got Delta, you got Southwest, you got Alaska, all positive, at least early on. Boeing, positive early on. Cruise ships actually positive early on as well with names like Norwegian Cruise and CCL and Royal and the rest all in positive territory. Then you look over at Walgreens Boots having a much better day than we've seen of late where that stock has had a bit of a pullback. Home Depot, 3M, Apple, you get the idea. But just because Apple's up, your assumption would be Microsoft would be up as well. It was not. They were moving in opposite directions, at least early on. Then you've got names like Chevron getting hit a little bit. Salesforce was getting hit not just a little bit. That was a lot. It was one of the worst performers in the Dow early on in this first hour of trade. You've got those beta energy names all getting beat up a little bit today as you fall underneath 100 for crude. Then you've got data, data dog. You've got CrowdStrike. You've got Baidu. You've got some of the usual suspects. Pepsi is the one thing that stood out for me today because as we get a little bit closer towards what we're calling the earning season, which is really when the financials kind of kick things off, Pepsi actually had a very nice report today, early on in positive territory as well. Beat on earnings, 
beat on revenue by 5% and had a great for forecast going forward. So that name actually not too distant from its 52-week highs. Very interesting to watch that one. It's been a name that I've spent in my portfolio for, I don't know, the better part of at least over five years and maybe even longer than that. I've had Pepsi and Coke. And it looks like things have been really trading pretty nicely for those names of late. We'll see how well that navigates through the second half of the year as well. Yesterday, we talked about Baba. So we're getting after unusual right now. Yesterday, Baba was trading 110. We had the 107s in July getting bought. Puts getting bought yesterday. What are they doing today? Well, after they bought 3,000 of those puts yesterday, it turned out pretty good for them because the stock went from 110 down to 107. They're back again. They're buying 8,000, a little bit more than 8,000, 8,400 of the July 107 puts again in BABA. So something to keep your eye on. I mentioned already the restrictions and some of the shutdown, blah, 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 blah. Everything that's going on in China, this obviously a reflection of that. Also, this one just stuck out for me because it was so interesting because of multiple factors, but it's Norwegian Cruise Lines. I talk about these cruise ships. And we've seen some put activity of late, even on positive days for the cruise ships that they go to the upside, still looking at those puts, go to the downside, definitely looking at those puts. Norwegian's kind of interesting because they're going far out in time, something we don't really see a lot of. They're going all the way to December for these Norwegian puts. 5,000 of the December puts at the five strike. Now, Norwegian Cruise is trading above $11. It's about 1130 when this ha trade happened. It's interesting because not only are they buying time, but they're going all the way down to the $5 strike. That, that just stood out for me. Does it mean it's going to happen? Absolutely not. Could it happen? Absolutely it could. But it's just very, very, this one was intriguing for me because of the fact that we don't see people very often going that far out in time, you know, multiple months like we're talking about right now. And on top of that, just going so far down, just sort of an interesting thing. Those are going for about 37 cents. but. It stood out. I thought it was very interesting. I thought it would be worthwhile to point that one out and give you an opportunity at least to take a look at what's going on in the cruise ship world, uh, obviously in the casino world and all the rest of it, where we talk about a lot of what's been going on, especially the overseas influence on some of these various uh, different uh, sectors and so forth. Folks, have a great day of trading. If you didn't understand what I'm talking about, about all this put activity that I'm talking about, to get yourself up to date, to get yourself schooled up a little bit, do something, find out about derivatives, understand derivatives. You've got to have that understanding. You need to be educated. Great people here at Market Rebellion, but there's a lot of different places you can go to get more and more knowledge. And I think knowledge is king. It's very important to know what's going on in derivatives markets. It can be used as hedges. It can be used a lot of different ways, and it gives you another opportunity. Just one more uh, you know, quiver that you've got, you know, throw something in your quiver. I'm Pete Nigerian. Have a great day of trading.